Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the RX 58 or 8 EVO, a 5.8GHz FETCHA compatible video receiver by UAU AV, which is intended to compete directly with the very famous and successful Immersion RC Rapid Fire. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over the features and specs of this video receiver and head outdoors and test it out. I was actually about to show you also a side by side comparison with the Immersion RC Rapid Fire and other receivers, but unfortunately, I got caught by the rain so the side-by-side -side comparison is going to be postponed to a future video. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the video receiver, you are getting a plastic cover which is compatible with the FetchUp Dominator goggles, the user manual, and the flat cable along with the power board which you will need to install inside the head tracker bay of the goggles and connect to the video receiver in case you are using an older set of goggles since the power which is going to be supplied to the video receiver by the model bay is not going to be sufficient. In terms of specs, Similarly to the Rapid Fire and other similar video receivers, the RX5808 EVO is designed to mesh two images together in order to improve the video quality and the recorded DVR. It features a built-in buzzer, which is going to indicate that the DC input voltage of the goggles is low. The antennas, which are not included, are going to be connected to SMA antenna connectors. It supports 48 channels, and navigating between the different options and setting the frequency are done using these three buttons. And finally, it features a built-in OSD, which means that the settings are going to be displayed on your goggles as well, in addition to this OLED screen. In addition, you should note that the model doesn't feature a micro USB port, so upgrading its firmware in the future, if it's going to be possible at all, is not going to be an easy task. Here you can see what it looks like after placing the RX5808 EVO inside the FetchUp HDO2 model bay, and I can tell you that the cover works great, and the model is well secured. After turning on the model, the UR UAV logo is going to appear. On the top and bottom sides of the screen, you'll be able to monitor the RSSI of the top and bottom antennas, and the selected frequency is going to be displayed on its center. As for operating the model, short pressing the center button is going to take you to the main menu, where you'll be able to adjust the save channels. You can switch between 8 available channels, and if you'd like to remove a channel, long press the center button and press delete. Under all channels, you can switch between the available 48 channels, and if you'd like to save a channel to the favorite section, long press the center button. Next, under the menu, you have the smart search and band scanner options. Under the settings menu, you can adjust the RSSI warning. Enable the auto lock function, which means that after setting a channel, the screen is going to be locked, and in order to unlock it, you will need to long press the center button. The RSSI units can be set to percents or DBM. The algorithm speed for switching between the top and bottom antennas can be set to normal, high, and low. You can reset the settings to the factory settings. And in order to calibrate the RSSI, you have to make sure that no VTX is turned on, and then press the calibrate option. After setting the frequency, you'll be able to lock the module in order to prevent one of the buttons from being accidentally pressed by long pressing the center button. So you can see, now you can either save it to the favorite, or lock the screen. Now when it is locked, you can see that pressing any of the buttons is not going to do anything. Unlocking the screen is done by long pressing the center button, and you should note that even when the screen is locked, you'll be able to switch between the favorite channels by pressing the Google's channel up and down buttons. One more thing that you should note is that unfortunately the on-screen display cannot be adjusted, so the frequency is going to be overlaid on the bottom left of the screen. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the model, and after testing it out, I can tell you that, as far as I can tell, this model is a little bit overpriced, as it comes with a price tag of about $100, and for that price, you are better off with the more familiar and backed up options. Having that said, keep in mind that I still need to conduct the side-by-side -side comparison test, but still my gut feeling says that this model should be cheaper. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flat footage, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.